Good morning. We want to welcome all of you who have chosen to worship with us this morning. This 20th day of Pentecost is truly a very special day as we welcome our new senior pastor, Tim Mabey, and his wife, Betty. We want to grant both of you our sincere love and support as we begin this exciting new venture together. God's blessing as you bring us the hope that is in Christ Jesus. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. And all God's people said loudly, Amen. God's unchanging hand. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Today's lesson is from 1 Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanius, and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. So that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Acacia. 
For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Acacia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. This is the word of the Lord. Hi, welcome to today's children's message. Today, I've been thinking about the fall a lot. I gotta tell you something, fall is easily my favorite season. I love when the weather becomes a little bit cooler. I know summer is super awesome, but I just love that little change in the season. But there's something I love more than all of that, and that's the leaves. When the leaves begin to change on the trees, I love to go outside when the sun is coming up or the sun is going down and be able to just see all these beautiful colors of the trees. It reminds me something about who we are as Christians and who Jesus reminds, me, reminds us that we are. And that is, is that we are unique, we are wonderfully made, and we are a beautiful creation of God. So when you go outside, take a second to see the leaves. See that not all of them are the same. They're different, and so are we. But together, we can make beautiful things. So let's go pay attention to God's creation this week and treat each other as that beautiful creation. Amen. The reading for today is from Matthew 22, verses 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show difference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Good morning, St. Luke's. It's a joy to be here speaking you, to you today, and I look forward to speaking to you for many years. Today we have a bit of a conflict situation in our Gospels, and it's a set-up conflict. So we have the Pharisees have tried to entrap Jesus and just have had no luck. So they decide to gather with the Herodians, send some of their disciples with the Herodians, which is a very wild thing. It would be the equivalent of the Bears and the Packers getting together to go after somebody, or the Democrats and the Republicans. We're talking two people who did not like each other. The Herodians supported the empire, made a living off the empire. Herod, their king, was their boss, and Caesar Tiberius was his boss. So they liked the empire. The Pharisees hated the empire. The thing they wanted most was for the Romans to be gone, to be out of their city, out of their country. So we have these two coming together, and they come to Jesus and they butter him up. I don't know if you heard it when it was read, but we know you are sincere. You know, when somebody comes to you and says, we know you are sincere, watch out. We know you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show difference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. 
you know something's coming here, the trap is coming. So, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar? Have you ever been in that situation? You know, I would be in that situation often when I was younger. My children would come to me and say, Dad, you're such a wonderful dad, loving and caring. And we just would like to know, can we spend the night at Bobby's house? And I would say, why, thank you, children. Yes, you may. And 15 minutes later, the head of the household would come down and get angry with me because she had already told them no. So I learned. I learned from Jesus. Don't be so quick to answer the question because you might be in a trap. Answer the question with a question. So when, my, when Tim or John or Allison would come to me and say, Dad, can I stay at... Jackie's house, I learned. What does your mother say? Jesus, why are you putting me to the test? He knows their, their plans. Show me the coin that you pay taxes with. Now, they're in the temple. They have money changers outside because you're not supposed to bring graven images, images of false gods into the temple. What does the coin say? And one of them, I don't know if it was Herodian or Pharisee. A Herodian we could maybe pass up because of their worldview. But if it was a Pharisee, wow, they pull out a coin. Whose name is on that? Caesar Tiberius. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Actually, the denarius said, Caesar Tiberius, son of the divine Caesar Augustus, son of God. You see, calling Jesus son of God at that time was not just a religious statement. It was a political statement. That Jesus was king of all things. King of all. And Jesus says, Give to Caesar what is Caesar. Give to God what is God's. The question is, what isn't God's? All that I am, all that I have, my entire being is a gift from God. Everything I am, everything you are, everything our neighbors are, whether they know it or not, is a gift from God. He answers this question with a question and then says, give to Caesar whatever Caesar wants, but give to God what God wants. Created by God, our prayer said, let us live in God's image. Let us act for God's glory. Let us give what is God's, our time, our talent, our treasure, all that we have. In these difficult times, we may feel, some of us, that we are alone and disconnected from one another, but we are still gathering as church. It may be over the airways, it may be in parking lots, but we are still gathered as church. And we are still called to ministry as church, giving God what is God's. May we give God all that we are and all that we have for God's glory. And may we know that though we may be separate, we are still united in the love of Christ. Amen. God's blessings this week.
welcome you this morning as we gather in this way, wherever you are and however you are joining us, we are very happy for your presence with us. We again continue to encourage you to take a look at the website for many of the ministries that are happening here at St. Luke's. We are very pleased to announce that Pastor Tim Maybe has joined our staff now, began last Monday, and will continue to be with us as we get uh, a chance to know him. And then also on yesterday, uh, Anna Elizabeth Kilbus, uh, we shared the sacrament of holy baptism with her, and we are very pleased for that and wish God's blessings upon that young family. And then on October 25th, the Rite of Confirmation will be celebrated here uh, within the family of St. Luke's. Lots of things continue to happen. Please consult the website. And we would like to again thank you for your ongoing uh, participation with us and then also the support that you give to us. I invite you now to a moment of prayer. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, you call us by name and invite us to share your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among preachers, missionaries, and evangelists. We give thanks for the witness of your servant, Luke the Evangelist, whom the church commemorates today, as we also give thanks for the baptism shared with Anna Elizabeth Kilbus, daughter of Joseph and Amy Kilbus. We ask you to bless them. God of praise, the heavens and all creation declare your salvation. From the rising of the sun to its setting, May the whole universe show forth your goodness. Raise up devoted stewards of all that you have made. Continue to protect those who face trauma from fire, wind, or rain. God of all, may your word of justice sound forth in every place. Restore divided nations and communities with reconciling truth. Be with our nation as we continue to search for ways of talking with each other and meeting the needs of the vulnerable among us. God of light, we pray for those living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt. Join their voices in a new song, assuring them that you call them each by name. We also ask you to continue to meet the needs of our fellow members, Joseph Roy, James and Terrell Russell, William, Samuel, Audrey, and Kai. Be with Teresa and Gracelyn Rutecki. Surround Paul and Io Sager, Alexandria and Annabella. Be with Blaine and Linda Sam, Jonathan Sam, and Rick and Nancy Olmsted Sambone. God of truth, you show no partiality. May your spirit guide the work of justices, magistrates, court officials, and all vocations of the law, that your promise of restoration may be known. And living God, as you raised Jesus from the dead, raise up those who have died in you. We give thanks for their witness, confident of your rescuing welcome to for us all. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. 
And now go with the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and continue to give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace, remember the poor, giving thanks to God always. <laughs>